Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's week one of the NFL on EA Sports. season with me in the booth as we begin our sixth season together is of course Charles Davis and CD so much to watch for coming up what are you keeping an eye on well Brandon I'm ecstatic to be back with you of course and we've got a good one right here out of the gates I'm interested in seeing some of the changes in 2021 running backs and wide outs even linebackers wearing single digit numbers but even more than that I want to see the changes defenses have made because last year we averaged 49.6 points per game. That's the highest ever by three full points. Can these defenses make an adjustment and start to catch up? Yeah, passer rating CD, an all-time high. Completion percentage, also an all-time high. So as you said, will those numbers continue to climb northward or will the defenses adjust? Try and start this drive in the air. And open is Keelan Cole complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Well, there you go, Charles, the first completed pass of his young career. And we expect it not to be his last. Very good to get the first one out of the way, though, as he begins his career. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Michael Carter, who played nearby in college in Chapel Hill. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Here's a give to Carter. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's say, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Something to watch here in week one of the season, tackling. Because you and I both know that in the preseason, a lot of these guys don't play a whole lot. Plus, the intensity and the speed really ratchets up on opening week. On first and 10, it's Carter. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Charles will take a look there at the draft class for the New York Jets. Robert Sala, the new head coach, he's got his quarterback as they took Zach Wilson number two and moved Sam Darnold down to Carolina. And we might end up saying that Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss taken in number 34 could go down as one of the steals in the draft. The wide receiver is drawing brave reviews as far back as the OTAs. And one other one that we should note, how about how they manipulated the draft? Traded at number 14 to take the guard, Elijah Vera Tucker, out of USC to protect Zach Wilson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. 
Here's second and eight. That's complete right around the eight. And the Jets are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. This is shaping up to be a really nice looking drive to get the season underway here. And how long do you think that they actually have been plotting this drive? I'm talking about the coaching staff, right? They've been thinking about this for a while now, and I think they're executing it even better than what they expected. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. So often you hear that pep talks don't really work in the heat of the battle, but collectively, this defense has to say to each other, we've been on our heels this whole first drive. This is where we need to dig in. And they got a nice stop right there for a loss on first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. They'll try to run for it with Carter. And this time he is in. Carter with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Jets are on the board here first in the season opener. Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Jets lead 7-0. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was capped off by the rookie Michael Carter's touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Gonzalez on to kick it away. Here's Smith to return it. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. But here we go for the first time with the Panthers offense led out by their new quarterback for 2021 in his fourth season overall now after three with the Jets. It's Sam Darnold. Many people put stock in a quarterback's record as a starter, and Sam Darnold just 13-25 and 25 overall with the Jets. So many think that he's not going to be the guy, but there's a lot of talent there, and the Carolina Panthers are expecting it to come out. This could be a classic case of a change of scenery could do him well, plus the surrounding cast that he's inheriting in Carolina better than anything he played with in New York. This is a great opportunity for Sam Darnold. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. 53, now it's Darnold. Gets this to the former Jet, Robbie Anderson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they give up the completion there. But defensively, Charles, you're going up against a quarterback here who's had some moments, but really a lot of ups and downs in the early part of his career. What's the plan against a guy like this? Well, you want to rattle him first and foremost. Bring some people at him, a couple extra guys in the pocket, see if he can handle it. The second thing, you want to make him think. Show him one look, go to another, disguise a few things, make him throw into what you call your... Well, I, I couldn't be any more excited about who's joining us here today. She's one of the most popular and prominent voices on discussions related to sports and pop culture. And of course, when you're not listening to my podcast, you're probably listening to hers, appropriately titled The Nia Polanco Show. Nia, it is great to have you on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me on, Kevin. You know, it's a nice change of pace. Today... From MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. It's week two of the NFL on EA Sports. Jets 
taking on the New England Patriots. We are situated about eight miles west of New York City at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go, and it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with the New England Patriots. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1-0. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. The first game's out of the way. Time to buckle down for the long season ahead, and we're off in week two. Gunnar Olszewski bringing it out. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. They're led out of the field by their big mobile quarterback. He can throw it, he can run it, Colin Kaepernick. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. On play action, it's Kaepernick. And incomplete on the deep ball. These two teams, Charles, the Jets and the Patriots, great rivals in the AFCs going back to the beginning of the Super Bowl era. Been a long time. Now, of course, in the recent memory, the Patriots, they have dominated, and that's capital D dominated. But, you know, change comes eventually, and the Jets, they got a new coach, new quarterback. And this rivalry, you feel like it could get very interesting again in a hurry. Absolutely, because as we learned in 2020, it's no longer Tom Brady is guaranteed to win the division because he's no longer there. We saw Buffalo take command in 2020. So this division, more open than it's been for the last 20 years or so. And the AFC's Pro Bowl punter last year, Jake Bailey on a punt for New England. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. Now it's Crowder. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Jets will take over first and 10. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. And he'll take it across the 50 and into New England territory. The numbers on the ground for Carter a week ago. 21 carries, 95 yards, and a score. That's a good start to the season. They got the win, and they were able to establish a good running game. Nothing that just blew people away, but a nice solid base to get things started. And they expect that to get tuned up and get better as the season moves on. Second and four. He's got his veteran tight end, Landry. A good throw there, and this is a quarterback who's still just getting his feet wet, obviously. And by most accounts, last week played okay in the victory. But I want to know, Charles, what was your impression of his play last week? Brandon, I think a lot of teams will be happy with okay. And early on, it's less about how many touchdowns did he throw, but did he not throw interceptions? Did he handle adversity? Did he handle the huddle? Those types of things, that's what people are looking for. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And Charles, we get a look there at the draft class for this offense. What do you make of it? Well, overall, I like the balance of the guys that they selected because, to me, they got a few guys who can step in and play right away, which is exactly what you want. But they also drafted for the future as well. They've got some guys who might need a year or two on the practice squad. So then we'll find out if they can actually play. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. It's brought in by Jamison Crowder. 
And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. to the ground with Carter. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Here's the ex Florida Gator, LaMichael P. Ryan. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, stepping back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Out of the gun, they run with Carter. Able to push his way through. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Carter will try the right side. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A couple of nice carries back-to-back -back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these aren't bare-bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five, more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. They'll try to run for it with Carter. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. Michael Carter, his second touchdown on the season. And the Jets have taken a first quarter lead. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown score or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. Footing always a concern, but the extra points have been good. And it's now a 7 0 game. Now, after the touchdown, here's Gonzalez on to kick it away. Olszewski now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game, but I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra injury. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice, but at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. The numbers for Hunter Henry from a week ago. Four catches, 64 yards. Better tighten up the coverage if you expect to slow this guy down because if he gets going, he'll eat you up. 
Now Kaepernick. And a dump off to White. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up a third down. This defense for the Jets, terrific last week in the season opening victory. Yeah, they held them to well under 200 yards of total offense. And in today's NFL, that's a feat to be proud of, especially with the emphasis on offense and what we're seeing each and every week, that great creativity and usual productivity. Intercepted. Picked off by Ashton Davis. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a jet touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Gonzalez to add the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Olszewski now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. New England trying to get to place on offense. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in, and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful, because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. Kaepernick will try again on second down. That's going to be caught. It's Jacoby Myers. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And Jacoby Myers made the team as an undrafted free agent. He's one of the few holdovers from last year, and he was the most productive. Led the team with 59 catches. Wants to add a few more to his career total as this game moves on. is James White and not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. Well, that kind of hit will certainly fire up your team both on the field and on the sideline. Tackles for lost yardage, they're always welcome. Second and 11 now. They will run with White out of the shotgun. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. And he'll drop it underneath to White. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. No room to be had there on the first down run as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. 
Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time he uses quickness to make a play. New England on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. To throw, it's Kaepernick. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Carl Lawson in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. That's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, and the second one here, that tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will be taken at the 13. It's a 41-yard punt, but just a net of 31 following the run back. And that will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Jets now to take over. They've got the lead right now. You remember last week they defeated the Carolina Panthers here. Good momentum. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. He kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Second quarter action, 156 remaining. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Gunnar Olszewski deep for New England. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. So that one will be accepted. Kaepernick now on first down. He's got White here. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Throwing on first down is Kaepernick. It's caught. This is White. Pitch and catch there good for 13. And it'll make it second down. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll bring up a second down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's White. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 38-yard line. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Play action. Now Kaepernick. And right side, Henry's got it. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Second and 10. Kaepernick going to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. It's complete. James White. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Walked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down?
And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. So we've hit halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the home team, the Jets, leading this one. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll get started down at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. And they've reached halftime with the score 17 to 10. Josh Allen has a touchdown pass. Next, we head north to Philly to check on the Eagles at home at Lincoln Financial Field. And they've got the lead in that ball game over the visiting 49ers. The Eagles losers last week. They need to pull one back at home to avoid falling to 0-2. Lastly, let's get out to Jacksonville. See what's happening with the Jaguars at TIAA Bank Field. And they've got the lead over the visiting Denver Broncos. DJ Chark, a touchdown reception. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half for the answer? We turn it back over to our broadcast team, of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Returnable here for Davis. And a penalty marker's down on the field. And they might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. But that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. A give. Carter running right. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him. Cold. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. It's the former Michigan man, Chase Winovich, who gets in there to bring him down. Well, partner, we know they came out of the locker room down on the scoreboard, but I will guarantee you the defensive side of the ball got super emotional. They can come out and play with aggressiveness, with fury, because they don't have to be quite as precise, and it paid off for them on that play, didn't it? Sure did. Excellent play, really setting the tone for this third quarter. So good work there on the defensive side for the first drive of the second half. Yeah, and until their offense can get into rhythm, their defensive players and staff have got to say to themselves, we've got to make it work. We've got to stand in here and make sure nothing else happens until our guys start moving the ball. Olszewski now to return. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And the Patriots will have great starting position as they take over first and 10. First down, here's White. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. This defense just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. On play action, it's Kaepernick. That's caught by Myers. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll run on first down. It's White. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Here's second and ten. Here's Kaepernick to throw. 
Open man is born. And out of bounds right around the 20. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Rohrwasser's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14 to 3. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. On second down, it's Carter, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run, it's Carter. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Four yards remain for second down. A handoff for Carter. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 42 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. A good strong run there by Michael Carter, reminiscent of his days at North Carolina. A thousand yard rush for each of his last two years in Chapel Hill despite being at a timeshare with Javante Williams, who was the second round pick of the Denver Broncos. Carter, the second pick of the fourth round out of UNC. He could be the Jets' leading rusher moving forward. First and ten, it's Carter. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. 
Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now a second down and six. Shotgun snap, and again to Carter. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Out of the gun now on third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. They'll look to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And the Patriots' defense is going to take over on down. New England's offense set to go. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. They need a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. First down, Kaepernick finding Bourne here over the middle. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Had a nice move, but can't break away. Down just inside the 30. Three yards the gain there, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field is popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch them out whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first and ten, here's Kaepernick. And hit behind a lot. He lost the football. It's loose. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one... 
That puts him in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drive. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They'll start on the ground, Carter. And not much there at all, as he'll get this only up to about the 11. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. You know, I was going to ask you if maybe they should surprise and pass the ball, but where they're at on the field, I think keep it on the ground, right? I like where you're going with this one, because field position is going to determine these play calls. And backed up where they are, I don't even think about putting the ball in the air. I tell my running backs, grasp the football, and I tell my offensive line, don't allow any leaks so they get hit immediately when we hand it off. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll go again with Carter. And he'll wind up getting about six out of that as that's going to lead us to the two-minute warning. 55 rushing yards on the ground for him so far. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. totally home free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and ten they'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground and whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 153 left got four now they deal with a second and six here's a give to Carter and now we're going to get a timeout defensively so another stop 150 left in the football game Carter. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback hey no time to be a hero we're not going to throw it here just eat up that clock and if you have the ball they can't score so signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half here's first and ten and they'll run here with Carter and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Six yards left on second down. Carter with it. Trucks over him. 
And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The Jets with victory seemingly in hand. They take the knee. So it's a victory here for the New York Jets. And it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half, but their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So for the Jets, it's a win here in their home opener as they move to 2-0. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Denver Broncos. Meanwhile, for the Patriots, they'll drop to 0-2. And, and they'll try to make amends next week as they host the New Orleans Saints. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.